Hey guys, Sponge Murphy here. So, with the new release of Warhammer Visions, uh, a new format, and then the last issue apparently they were saying there's, they're going to be changed and things in it, um, I thought it would be a good time to do a review of the magazine. Um, not really a review of it, the, the content inside of it, but just like, you know, what's the good and the bads of the magazine itself. Um, in the last issue they said they were making changes, um, but really the only change that I could see is that it's it's a bigger issue it's like resized and this is the very first issue of visions that I got it was the third one and I've only ever bought two more after this including this one so it's not too popular with me but um you know with this new format apparently I said I get the new one and give another chance to see what it's like so um yeah so the change really is just, it's, it's bigger it's a lot nicer looking it looks more like a magazine there was never like a problem with this one it was uh, kind of small but it was thick and you know it was fine it worked but um, the, the bigger issue the bigger photographs looks a whole lot better than the smaller one so um, and don't, please don't mind my makeshift table for now it's my Thomas Tank Engine table it's all I could get so, um, so let's have a look at a few of the good things that the magazine offers. Um, so basically, what it does is it goes over or it shows it, it shows pictures of what's been released, the new releases, as well as other stuff in it. So, like the first, I think it's like the first forty pa pages are all the new Skatari stuff that's been released up until the day that uh, this issue came out. So it's something like 40 plus pages of all Skatari stuff. Um, you know, just shows them at different angles. Um, so look, there you go, you have your Iron Strider Ball Starry somewhere now. Uh, Sidonian Dragoon. You know, and it has a pretty cool uh, fold out, which I'm pretty sure came with all of them as well. A big fold out picture, which is always nice to have. Um, yeah, so you're getting a lot of uh, good, high-quality pictures. That's one thing the magazine uh, shines as well. It's really good quality pictures. Um, and with the bigger format, it's a lot nicer to see them this way. Like here you see like a Necron. I think it's a Necron Lord. Surrounded by some Skatari guys. Uh, Sakarian Infiltrators. I really like them guys. I think they're cool. So, yeah, that's one of the good things. Um... Another one is you get an army of the month in every issue, which is like a, someone, some guy's army that they bring in that take pictures and everything or whatever. Um, and usually they're like top class stuff. Like you know, there's a lot of um, like stuff that people add in their own, like you know, like personal things, little conversions they want to do, um, and it's really nice to look at. Um, but the best thing that the magazine has to offer is the Golden Demon pages. Um, it's a little bit short. And let me see, it goes from page 82 to. Oh, well, 99. Actually, it's not as short as I thought it was. Oh, what is this? Up to 107. So you're getting about like nearly 30 pages of it. So this is by far the best part of the magazine. Uh, Golden Demon stuff is always impressive. And um, you know it's the best of the best pretty much that you're going to be looking at on these pages. Um, and it's my favourite part of the magazine. It's like, really inspirational. And um, if you know if you're wanting to get your work up to this standard someday. This is the stuff you'd want to be looking at. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much most of the good things about it. Um, and the bad things, and it's unfortunate that the bad things are, you know, pretty big. Um, it's a very monotype magazine. And what I mean in saying that is, um, just look at the index here. We have from page 4 all the way until page 57. It's all 40k. It's all Skatari. 
um, and then it's just start showing some elder stuff. Uh, if you're a big fantasy player and you were getting and you were seeing this in it, you'd be a little bit disappointed. Especially if you got this magazine next month. And I pretty I don't think like any fantasies on the is gonna be released by the next issue. So it's probably going to be all pictures of new more Skatari stuff probably or adaptus mechanicus. So you're gonna have that next month, another forty pages of forty K stuff. Um and even in the first issue, it was all Tyranids for the first 40 pages around that, and then it was Lord of the Rings, so you're still not even getting your fantasy um, pictures in there either. Um, and another thing, as you can see in the pictures here, there's always three little sections of writing, uh, English and two other languages, which is a little bit unfortunate. It would be nice to have a little bit more writing, maybe like a side column in just one language. You know, you could read a little bit more, get a little bit more information about it. Um, would would always be nice. Um, you know, and this month's issue especially, we had uh, Skatari, we had Eldar, and then the army of the month is another 40k army. Um, unfortunately, you know, they're nice, they're grey and everything, but if you're not really into space marines even, or just 40k, you know they're great to look at, like the models, the paint jobs, everything are really nice, but it's just not really my thing. Um, so like it could be even if you were a 40k player and you're, or maybe just like a like a collector in general, it is a little bit of a disappointment to see like like how high does this go up to page 81? The first 81 pages, pretty much half of the book is nearly is just all 40k stuff, and it's just pictures. Like there's nothing. Like very little information, but it's pretty much a picture book as well as what you're looking at. Um, and as much as I praise the Golden Demon pages for, um, if they took the Golden Demon stuff out of this, I wouldn't buy this in a million years. You know, that some of the stuff is nice, and you're getting a bit of a lottery where you could be getting a mixture of 40k and fantasy, or just one or the other. If this the uh, Golden Demon stuff wasn't here, it's definitely not worth it. Um, this is by far the best piece, and the, and this magazine really needs it, um, because the price of the book, it's seven fifteen pound, twelve US dollars, and nine euro. You know, it's not exactly a cheap magazine. Um, get, like we're saying that it's a lot nicer having it in a bigger format, but it's not exactly cheap. Like here's it's showing more pictures of war machines, and it's just. Like more 40k stuff, more what's that Thunderhawk or Thunderfire gunship or Storm Raven or something. More tanks. You know, tanks are great, they're lovely and everything. Like Flood Angels are nice. But I'm paying for a Warhammer uh, Visions magazine, not a Warhammer 40k magazine. Like a Soul Grinder here is nice. A little bit something different at least. Um, but you can. Oh, there's some fantasy, some scaven stuff, which is nice to look at. Um, the heavy metal team have some pages there as well, which is great. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, it's nine euros, so it's a little bit pricey, but it is like at least once a month. Um, but this is the scope. Oh, sorry, the subscriptions is a lot cheaper. I was looking at it, and it's eighty euro. And I think it's like a hundred and eight euro if I did this thing, or if I bought it every month. Um, you know by itself so at least you can get money off of the subscriptions and then finally the last bit of the magazine if I stop hitting the camera is um, or the painting tutorials and these are a bit hit and miss you know I don't mind them they're there you can use them you know if you want to have a quick reference to do white or what kind of base colour to start with it it's kind of nice to look at but don't, I wouldn't really you know, use these as my main source of painting tutorials, kind of. Um, like if you want to paint white robes, um, I'm sure it'll take more than four steps to like just work way up. But it's a nice little reference to have that. Like if you want to play, paint a blue glow, you know, at least you know what darker blue to start with, and then what lighter kind of blue to work up to. And uh, without the middle bits, you know, kind of figure out the middle bits yourself. So, um, so that's it, that's kind of the hit and miss of the magazine, um, you know, that's just my opinion on it, um, personally, I 
couldn't see myself getting next month's one because of all this guitar stuff coming out you know they're great and everything but I can't look at them anymore I want to see more fantasy stuff really um, and it's a pity the Warhammer or the White Dwarf magazine is only sold in GW shops I think and in model shops like you can't get it in a news agents over here or anything because um, it's like it's a lot cheaper but it's weekly and it's a lot more information so it's a pretty cool little magazine and um, you know like there's no conversion topics in this in the first one there was a little bit of a conversion thing if I remember there was like an arc truck converted up if I can find it very very quickly there it is you know on it shows like they're only small little um, conversions but they're there you know they're, it's a cool little thing like that that was in the first issue that was nice but um, I didn't see any other issues after that um, so yeah so basically you're paying 9 euro or 7 15 pound for like a photo magazine pictures were great it's a nice source book um, but that's pretty much it if you were like newer to the hobby or if you were like say you know, like a 9 year old kid this would be great. I could easily see my son if he was older, like flicking through this, looking at all the, you know, like, look like robots and space marines, and you know, it'd be great for that. But for the more mature guy who's been to the hobby for a longer time, like me, it's a little bit of a miss more than like 50 50. I'd say it's about 70 30. Um, and like when you when you get the magazine, it's wrapped in plastic, so you have no idea what's in it apart from a little bit of information on the bottom and it's just a picture of basically matching the cover nearly on the back so um, so yeah so that's it that's just my opinion on it and um, I really like to see comments from people who have got this magazine and like to hear their own opinions on it you know some people might say it's brilliant some people might say it's a complete waste of money that's what I kind of thought when I first got it it's a little bit pricey for what it is but you know I pick it up every now and again like and um, if there's something that I knew, like if there were a new scam release and it was all over the front cover, I'd be picking it up straight away. So um, so yeah, so make sure to leave your thoughts and opinions, whatever you guys think of it in the comment section below. And I hope you like this kind of general review of Warhammer Visions. Um, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing comments from you guys about this. Uh, so that's it, I'll see you guys next video and thanks for watching.